Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's Unitronic Cybersecurity Webinar in focus on the Vision and Samba series products. My name is Evgeny Bloch, and I'm uh, the company CEO. The main topics that we will cover today during the webinar are the industrial cybersecurity overview. We will discuss what are the threats over the industrial sector. Uh, on the second topic that we will talk about is uh, what we, we what should we protect as a P PLC developers or or machine manufacturers? Then we will cover the UniLogic uni features that are cybersecurity related. At the end, we will have the time to uh, answer your questions. So feel feel free to write the questions anytime on the chat section. About the cybersecurity background, so according to the statistics and uh, research research uh, that made during the last few years, the cyber the cyber security uh, industrial cyber security section was about thirty five percent percent of the attacks are made over the cyber security targets. Uh, every year. As you can see on the left side, we have a rise every quarter about the, the amount of cybersecurity attacks made on the ICS uh, targets. ICS is industrial uh, control systems. Okay, so we are talking about SCADA, we are talking about PLC, IOs, any IIoT devices. How it's made? So the basic uh, the basic cyber attacks are using the Shodan IO. Shodan IO is a website that's scanning daily on daily basis the the entire internet and trying to focus on finding IoT and IIoT devices like PLCs, SCADA systems, computers, uh, cameras, and everything that have an IP and connected to the internet. Try to identify what is behind it is it a plc by siemens by unitronics by rockwell or anyone provide the needed information like versions software versions plc names the ips to allow attackers connect here are a few examples that i just made of getting two unitronics devices that are currently exposed to the internet and can be attacked remotely with no any protection due to the fact that the users or the machine builder uh, left the port forwarding open to anyone to access with no any protection to the device. As you might know, for the last two years, Unitronics is certified as a company to the ISO 27001, is a family of uh, IT related uh, management system. So Intronics is certified for design, uh, development, manufacture, and sales of program and logic controllers, PLC, and automation products. In addition to that, due to the fact that Unitronics is also a cloud provider, we are certified for ISO 27017 as a cloud service provider for PLC logic controllers and automation products. For the PLCs, what should we protect? First, we, we must protect the application because the application is the easiest way to make us a damage. I can just download an empty application and the entire machine won't worth nothing because the, the application will be deleted. The system configuration parameters like IP addresses, COM ports, prot communication protocols, what we are discussing right now is vision and samba so as you know it's the info mode what we call info mode application parameters parameters that we are saving to to configure our set points uh, temp, uh, limits uh, max uh, mean of temperature and so on data tables sd files and hmi user hmi operations direct from the screen We will discuss three protection levels that we should be aware of and should 
uh, handle during our commissioning process. First is the device, the device itself, then the network related issues, and then the enhanced protection, I mean also the remote access uh, and the remote assistance. Let's discuss the device level that currently supported on the VisiLogic software. So first, all of us using the info mode. Info mode, de default protected by password 1111, everyone know that. But be aware that using system integer 253, we are able to change our default password for the info mode. So please prevent your end users access the info mode. Second uh, topic that we have here is to enable the Modbus limitation. If you take a look on the vision section, the help vision section, you will find that the, the vision and Samba PLCs ad slave addressing is, is entirely exposed. So everyone, once we enable Modbus, everyone can access every bit a memory integer, memory memory long, system double word, and so on. Uh, usually, we don't want to let our uh, master devices, someone else master devices, to access freely and, and write over our uh, uh, range of uh, internal registers. So for that, we allow the uh, Modbus limitation functionality. It's blocked. It's enabled uh, using system bit three three o five, and System integers 165, 166 define the start and end addressing of the calls, and 167, 168 is the start and end addressing of the registers. A new functionality. Since the latest OS version that is already available for all of you publicly, we added additional protect a network protection level. It, it's used by a system double word 10 uh, that allow every bit, every uh, from bit five, zero to five, every bit have different, uh, has a different meaning. Bit number zero is to deny remotely download or change the PLC state. Once we operate this bit, we set it to one, no one will be, will be able to download remotely the software to our PLCs or to set it to stop mode, for, in, for an instance, or to initialize it from the VZ logic. The, bit, the second bit, bit number one, is to block the access key press. So when we are on remote operator, if we have a PLC model like V130 or V3 V350, that we have also keys on our touch panel, it will block the F1, F2, F3 press. Bit number two will block our HMI key pad entry and buttons. So we will be able to see the HMI. We will be able to remote access the PLC and see the HMI, but we won't be able to in input any data or press the keys. Bit number three will uh, deny changing data table values. Bit number four will block all of our writing, uh, memory writing. So we won't be able even using VisiLogic to write the values, only to see online values. And bit number five is to prevent SD operations. So we have here the entire package to protect our PLC from remote un unauthorized access. What we have to do as a developer or machine builders is to develop some system maintenance screen that will, be, with, will allow the local operator to set the bit on or off or I suggest only to set it off. So on after, let's say, some timeout, like 10 or 15 minutes, the bits will, will be set to on. And only if someone is there and manually uh, using the HMI is, uh, reset the bits, then we will, we will be able to connect and modify the PLC remotely. This is very strong functionality de developed on the latest OS of the uh, VisiLogic. About additional uh, best practice rules for network protection. So first, 
we, we have to be in focus and try to design our machine to act as a network master. Why? Because if we are the network master, so we are a client to uh, some other slaves' protocols, we don't expose any ports to the network. So no one can attack us because we don't have any ports that are in a listen mode. Okay. If we have Ethernet sockets that are unused, please uh, initialize them as a master. So anyway, they will be a non in non-listen mode. So even though they are not used, but no one can use them to access us. The main rule is stop the port forwarding. Many of many of you used to uh, get a industrial router or some standard router. Define uh, get a, a public IP and uh, define a port forwarding rules to be able to access uh, directly the the PLC from a remote site. Stop doing that. That's what the showdown is looking for. They are looking for uh, devices that have the open port forwarding directly to access. Use the VPN functionality. We will discuss it in, a, in the, on the next slides. In addition to that, usually the IT networks are the most attractive for the attackers. Once we have on factory OT network, stick, stick that the PLC in the machines will be on the OT network and not on the IT network. That means that users or any printers that are installed on the IT network won't uh, expose our uh, OT equipment like machines, PLCs, to, to uh, do the attackers. For the enhanced protection, of course, the focus is here on the UniCloud, because the UniCloud have many benefits in terms of cyber. First of all, it's totally locked, secured, and protected. We don't need to have a public IPs or static IPs for our UniCloud gateways, for our UCR routers. Once we don't expose them with a public or static IPs, the attackers cannot access our equipment. Any, no way they can access us. The, the connection, the connection from the, for the UniCloud is made from the router to the UniCloud and not vice versa. So no any ports opening, no any firewalls, rules, and so on. Uh, the router itself supports a dynamic DNS and the VPN. So even if you don't want to use the UniCloud, this, the UniCloud, please get a, get a public IP, but not a static one. Define a dynamic DNS. Dynamic DNS allows you to use noip.com or any other dynamic DNS providers to access your routers from remote site over VPN secure tunneling. We have an article on our support portal on, on how to define a VPN and how to connect a Windows a computer to the, to, the unique, to the UCR router over VPN. As I mentioned, the UCR also have the firewall functionality. By default, all incoming traffic is blocked, except the VPN tunnel. That means that no one can, can get into your uh, local network without VPN access. The UniCloud offers full end-to-end -end secure remote access. So once we, we are connected from a mobile laptop to the UniCloud VPN, we can freely access our equipment that behind the router. It can be a Unitronics equipment or non-Unitronics equipment that we have to expose to uh, on, the, on the UniCloud configuration. Okay, thank you. I will, I will now give you the time for your questions. Please use the chat to write your questions.
Okay, so no questions were published. So thank you for your time. Uh, you will get the recording of this presentation from the marketing department. Thank you again. Bye-bye.